Another trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom means another video about The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So before we talk specifics, it, it's been a long time this game has been coming and I have wondered naturally why they've been so cryptic, you know? Like, I mean like, you know, I understood to a degree. You can't show off too much when we still have so long to wait because it's really been a long time. You can't you can't show all your cards and then like we're just sitting around for a year and a half, you know? So I get that. But the closer we have gotten to release, the sillier and sillier it has seemed for them to be giving us these quick Teasers! Each presentation, I keep expecting the big reveal. You know, the big one. The reveal of the main plot, the basic premise of the game. And then of course, you know, new mechanics. It's, you know, it's not just gonna be a lot of little stuff. This is Nintendo. Why did this sequel take so long? We know there's gonna be like some primary hooks, you know? There's gotta be at least one big new thing. And you know, Link's got his like grossy arm now. So like, is that, is something with that? What is that? What is that? We still don't know. This trailer definitely gave us a lot to chew on, more so than any other trailer. Each trailer has shown more than the last. This one, definitely on top. There's a lot in there and that's including, you know, some like kind of mechanics and, and ideas and weapons and enemies and stuff. So yeah, like there is a pretty decent amount here, but it was still, Short, <laughs> it still didn't really answer any questions. There'll probably be more. Like, you know, it'll probably get like a launch trailer. Maybe they'll do a bunch of trailers right before release. Maybe a story trailer, very possible. But like right now, we are only three months away from release. This was really their last chance to give us that big full reveal in a, you know, in a main Nintendo Direct presentation and I get it now. I get it now. I could not see it until we got here because before I could only see my own expectations. I could only imagine what I expected them to do and I didn't know why they weren't doing it. But now I see it, now I get it. These trailers have been so short and cryptic because they don't want us to see too much. They just don't want to. This is purposeful. They didn't even give us the name of the game until pretty late into this whole process. You know, because they thought like even that was like too much information. It turned out to not be any information at all, but that's how careful they've been. And even now, three months before release, they are still hesitating to tell us too much. It is clear to me now, I had to get here, but now that I'm here, it's clear, being mysterious about Tears of the Kingdom is something they just want. And considering how spoiler phobic I am, I can certainly appreciate this. You know, when, when I played Breath of the Wild, I ended up being so happy that I did not watch all the productional, production, promotional material. Cause I went back and watched those trailers and gosh, they showed off just about everything in the trailers and the previews. And Nintendo has been doing that a lot in recent years. That's been an issue for the last like, you know, basically like for the Switch's life, just showing off too much. But I, I think they're finally understanding that it's just not necessary to spoil everything about a game in order to sell it. So they're kind of swinging back the other way, or maybe they just are with Zelda. Could easily be a Zelda thing alone. I don't know, but that's how it seems. And I think personally, that's great. And this actually leads into the content of this actual trailer analysis too. Now that we're here, I am also realizing, you know, after watching that trailer, I'm realizing all over again, I guess I don't actually want to see more. You know, like they've given us all these little teases and I'm just kind of like, man, if they did a big full reveal now, I don't even know if I'd want to watch it. Like I, I always knew it was gonna be hard to decide how much I wanted to see. I want to be surprised, but it's a sequel. So it, the whole thing isn't quite as fresh and new and amazing. So is it as important or is that even more important because you need to, <laughs> you need to savor the only surprises that you do have, I don't know. And I knew it would be hard because I like to make videos about trailers. I like to analyze stuff. I like to pick apart, it's fun. But now that we have this trailer here, 
I, I guess I reached my limit. I'm done, especially like seeing how Nintendo is being purposefully mysterious. That makes me like, okay, you know what? I, I, I think I don't want to see more. Now I'm kind of wishing I didn't even watch that whole trailer. <laughs> I was expecting more and now I'm like, I should have just closed my eyes. I, I just, I think they were right. They were right to do it this way. Cause I'm like, yeah, even that, I, don't, I don't need more than this. I'm gonna buy the game. And because of this, seemingly now very purposeful air of mystery they're putting over the game, that's intriguing. That's fun. This game is still kind of a mystery. That's really cool and very unusual for a Nintendo game. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is not a traditional trailer analysis. I'm not going shot for shot, frame for frame. I'm not picking apart every little thing. There was too much in this trailer for me to want to do that. I'm actually trying to forget a lot of the stuff that I saw, so it's maybe a little bit fresh when I play it, but there are several notable things in the trailer that really stood out and that I can't forget now, <laughs> so we might as well talk about them. So basically, this is not comprehensive. This is just some of the stuff. That's all I can give you, I'm sorry. So first let's talk about the tone of the trailer. Like we, we have had, like with this game, they keep going back and forth. We have had these dark, scary trailers and these glorious, sunlit, wonderful, colorful trailers, you know? And like this time, they're back to another scary one. They are making the game look absolutely apocalyptic, extremely just dire and dangerous. I particularly love how we hear Zelda verbally doubting <laughs> if Link can even handle this. That's a good one. That's a new one right there. That sows those seeds of like doubt and scariness. I love it. Such a good way to just play up the danger and, and deepen the mystery that they have been sowing, you know? And like the first game dealt mostly with a calamity that happened in the past and you kind of got to clean up what's left behind. But this game clearly has you right in it. You are in it. And that is exciting. Just such an amazingly dark tone, you know? And one really interesting thing, and this is definitely something we'll have to wait and see when we play the full game, how much it represents the actual game. But at least from here, like, I was hoping for a dark and scary Zelda, but like usually in the past, Dark means spooky, you know, scary monsters. This is dark and dire in such a new way, in such a new apocalyptic, just scare, just dangerous kind of way. Not just like, oh, it's a ghost, you know, or it's a skeleton person. It's like, no, this is just like an army of monsters and the world is ending. And that's, it's just a, it's a new thing. And it was, it was something that was suggested in the first game, but we didn't get to explore as much now we do, very cool. One big thing to note, uh, we hear some spoken lines from some, presumably, some kind of bad guy. He is commanding his followers to destroy Hyrule, just to kill every last soul, just to do it, which is, of course, terrifying. You know, it's not about conquest, just total destruction, complete annihilation. So it's it's pretty, we didn't see who was speaking. It's pretty safe to assume this is Ganon, Ganondorf speaking. I mean, just who else would have the authority or the desire to issue this command? Who else controls these monsters? However, personally, I hope this isn't the case. I hope there's more to this than meets the Ear. Cause like this whole mummified Ganondorf thing, it's so cool and it's so mysterious and we still don't even completely understand it. You know, and like we still get glimpses of mummy dwarf in this trailer. We keep just seeing that. We never see a fully restored version, you know? So it's like, it's a little bit weird to let us hear the restored version. Right? I mean, I guess technically that could just be like, there's the big reveal of when he's, you know, they wanted us to know that he's there, but he's not fully restored yet. That'll be a thing in the game, maybe. But like, I don't know, is it possible that this is actually some like underling commander guy? Maybe, probably not. I just really hope so. Just one, the idea of a different antagonist in addition to Mummy Dwarf just sounds amazing. I always want new villains in Zelda games. 
New serious ones, not wacky ones, you know, not like the Yiga clan. And then two, after all of that mystery and mumminess, and we don't even know what's going on, it's just kind of disappointing to just hear him talk. And he just, he doesn't even have like a, doesn't it like a vo like a weird effect on his voice to make him sound like a ghost? He doesn't even sound like Ganondorf's voice did in the previous games. Just kind of sounds like a guy, just kind of like a generic anime villain kind of sounding guy. It just doesn't do anything for me. It'd just be really disappointing. Like a very basic villain kind of guy. So I don't know. I'm hoping there's more to it, but probably not. Whatever. Let's move on. So uh, back to the tone of the game. So yeah, we've seen very dark, very scary, but then we've also seen very colorful and bright and very nice. And you know, any game is going to have multiple different vibes for, you know, different areas, different scenarios. Like that that just makes sense. And that could be what's happening here, you know, like could be the, all the dark scary stuff is from like a specific cutscene or something like that. But um more than ever after this trailer, I am sensing some kind of like specific duality. Here we very prominently see the Blood Moon, which um I will probably have just a bigger part to play in the story, you know? Before it was more of just kind of a mechanic, just kind of a thing to scare you, but it was really just to respawn all the enemies so the game didn't have too much gunk in its RAM or whatever, you know? But I could easily see this being something that is expanded considerably as like a mechanic, as like an actual thematic through line, like through the whole game. And this could take many forms, you know? It, it, it could be where it's random, like a blood moon. You know, every so often the world is plunged into this scary state, or maybe just for a period of time during the story, maybe during specific story sequences. Maybe it's, maybe it's like a light world, dark world thing where like you can do it on purpose or something like that. We don't really know, but like, I, I'm definitely getting that there's, there's more to this than just, it's just a scary thing that we see in the trailer or it's just the blood moon, you know? Next, we had new enemies. Uh, there are now these flying enemies. They seem like, you know, pretty basic flying enemies, but you know, I like them. It's cool, and you know, you spend a lot more time in the sky in this game, so it makes sense to have some flying enemies. And also just any more enemy variety is gonna be welcome, because that was, <laughs> was kind of one of the problems with Breath of the Wild. You really saw the same enemies a whole lot, so any, the more the merrier here. More notably, and the number one thing in the whole trailer, I kind of wish I could unsee, and that I'm also just like not gonna look at again, <laughs> Going off of memory, you can look, here's a picture. We're showing it, but I'm not looking. It's this big, weird stone ruin kind of monster. Like, I don't know, is this a major boss or is it just like a talus, something that you fight multiple times? I don't know, probably the latter, um, but it's huge and it tries to smash Link and golly, Looks really cool. This is re <laughs> looks really, really cool. I only got a tiny glimpse, but my gosh, that that is exciting. No idea how do you, how do you take that thing down? It's just a big smashy monster. How do you do it? Maybe you climb it, because it's very like tall and straight. Maybe you you climb. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe some new ability that we don't know about yet. That's how you beat it. Who knows? And uh, speaking of abilities, I know we we've got like the uh, we like the time reversal one where you can like make a thing go back in time individually. There were a lot of fast little clips of abilities in this trailer, and I've just decided to not look at them. Maybe there's a reveal of like <laughs> what you can do. I'm just gonna not. So that's fine. Moving on. Another thing though that I also can't unsee. Grinding on rails? <laughs> that's, that's so cool. That's just, that's so cool. I mean like, name a game where it's not awesome that you could just jump on rails and grind on them. Like, it's just, eh, that's just cool. Speaking of cool, but also really bizarre and unexpected, it's cars. You could just drive cars in this one, I guess. There's cars in this game. <laughs> well, not exactly cars, but just like weird contraptions, you know? We see one on the ground, going over fields, and then one in the sky, like gliding around. Now this is something I'm trying not to get my hopes up over, but these don't just feel like things that you just kind of get. 
They feel like things that you build. They feel like contraptions, you know? Getting a big Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts kind of vibe. I think it is very possible that they were inspired by the contraptions that people build in the first game, you know, with all the octo balloons and the people would just build these flying machines. And I think they took that as inspiration and now maybe we can officially more easily build contraptions? I don't know, but that's a cool idea. And finally, we still don't know what's up with Link's grossy arm and how it relates to Zelda falling. But like, they will not stop focusing on Zelda falling and Link's arm. And I think this is more than just showing us bits of the opening cutscene, you know? Just like, oh, we just happened to, you know, we're just cutting apart that first thing and sprinkling them throughout the trailers. This feels like a very, very important thing. Very deliberate. There's a part where it almost looks like Link's arm is like also in another dimension or something with Zelda and Link can kind of tell there's a there's a connection there it's like they're connected through the grossy arm and at the end Zelda says please lend me your power i think Link is helping Zelda with this arm wherever she is. And I still think maybe possibly it could mean Zelda has her own playable sections. Not getting my hopes up. Not getting my hopes up. I know I did a whole video on that. Probably not gonna happen. Just leaving the door open a crack for that one. Uh, but I, I guess technically it's probably more likely that she will have sections where you play as the arm, maybe, or just, Link does things with the arm that helps her, but that means that there might be a whole other thing where he's helping her somewhere else. He can't just be the arm somewhere else. Maybe you play, I can't, can't go into that again, but there's something there. There is something major with that, the relationship, a Link and the Zelda and the grossy arm. So that's it, that is all I am willing to examine right now. Game's only a few months away, so, uh, yeah, I do invite you as always to head down to the comments and let me know what you thought about the trailer, point out little details that people might have missed. I'm not gonna read those comments because I, I don't want the spoilers, but other people like reading the comments, it's good. Engagement, engagement is always good, right? So thank you for watching and now on to the Pikmin video. All right, here we go.